الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا ابي القاسم محمد وعلى اهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما باقي الطلاب الراضين الحجة بن الحسن القائم المنتظر المهدي اجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ولعنة الله على أعدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين Brothers and sisters, so praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great blessing and we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us even more in the coming month of Ramadan and insha'Allah ta'ala open our hearts and prepare our hearts for receiving even more blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month, in the holy baraka month of Ramadan. And in continuation to the explanation to dua, dua al-iftitah, from where we stopped. Imam Sajjad alayhi salam said, وَأَيْقَنْتُ أَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ فِي مَوْضِئِ الْأَفْوِي وَرَحْمَةِ وَأَشَدُّ الْمُعَاقِبِينَ فِي مَوْضِئِ النَّكَالِ وَالنَّقِمَةِ That is, O oh Allah, I am certain that you are the most merciful of all those who show mercy in situations of pardon and mercy and the hushes in punishments. Brothers and sisters, when we raise our hands and our hearts and our minds towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Imam taught us وَأَيْقَنْتُ For Allah, I am very certain. We must have that certainty, that belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Those call over in the net. Sorry, Saz, you may unmute yourself. There is nothing that is more merciful, nothing that is more merciful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there may be things, someone, some people who have been good, merciful, but none can be at par with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be our belief. That should be the certainty. وَأَيْقَنْتُ أَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ فِي مَوْضِئِ الْأَفْوِي وَالرَّحْمَةِ Especially in situation of forgiving, in situation of pardoning, in situation of giving, and also in term of punishment, Imam reminded us, the hushes in punishments. So brothers and sisters, first, and in, in facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should have this, we should be in this uh, situation, in this spiritual situation. That is, as a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be in a state of despair, in a state of despair and hope. Or what uh, can be better termed as between fear and hope. Bainal raja, bainal khawf wa raja. Khawf is fear. Raja is hopeful. That is, when we face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we fear that our 
shortcomings, our sins, our bad, our mistakes would not be forgiven. But on the other side, believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such that it is Arhamur Rahimin is the most merciful of all those that can show mercy. We have hope towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at, a, at the beginning of at the beginning of the, 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 the dua, Imam showed us that you know uh, 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 we should be in a state of raghaba wa rahba, that is between desire and dread. We want, and at the same time, we also fear. But here, Imam said, Allah, I am certain you are the most merciful in situation, in condition, in situation of forgiving and in situation of mercy. Brothers and sisters, you know, if we are worthy of pardon and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then mercy will descend on us. So much so that sometimes too much mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we lost comprehension of the blessings of Allah. Too much. You know, it's like the, uh, the air that we are breathing in and the capacity, the ability to breathe. We have it that we take it for granted that we will be, we will go on having it. We forget, we cannot comprehend that blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the abundance of such blessing for an example when the rain falls from the sky as a manifestation of allah's mercy so much so that in some places in some valleys water would overflow even in some places there would be flooding you know, because of too much water, the, 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 the land cannot absorb the enormous amount of rain that descends from the sky. And that can be the case of men when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door of sustenance for men. The abundance of sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that man cannot comprehend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overwhelms man so much so that he does not know what to do with it. We have so much that Allah has given us that sometimes we don't know what to do with it. Allah, gave us so, Allah gives us so much time, we waste it. Allah gives us so much wealth, we waste it. Allah gives us many other things that we have wasted on this life. And then this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given so much that we have lost comprehension of the blessings of Allah. This is Anta arhamur rahimin. And sometimes Allah has forgiven us. Allah has delayed punishment of us on us for bad that we have done. That we have forgotten that Allah has given us that, uh, uh, that Allah has delayed the punishment of us on us that we keep on doing bad. We forgot that Allah has given us time to 
to repent to him. He loves us so much that he wants us to return to him. He gives us time, yet we keep on forget, forgetting. So brothers and sisters, and the same thing, if Allah wants to give his mercy, sometimes Allah will even give more. The same with punishment at Ottoman from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For an example, if a person deserves to be tormented, then the torment comes to him, the punishment comes to him in a severe and in unimaginable way. And uh, sometimes we are in just like just like uh, 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 when we are in a state of khawf, fear, or raja, and hopeful. In the case of punishment, in the case of punishment, we are also in between two things. That is, as for the extensive mercy we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as for the severe torment, punishment, we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, we should be, we should be very certain. None other except you, O oh Allah, you are the Lord. Anta arhamur rahimin. In the domain of absolute power and might, fimaud the ilaf we were rahma. And if a sinner, if we are if we are sinners, and then we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty, extending the hand of plea, humility with humility, with abjectness, with wretchedness, all the bad that we have done. Oh Allah, I have been so bad. Extending our hands, pleading. Forgive us our sins, O Allah. In such a situation, Allah is Arhamur Rahimin. Not only Allah forgives our sin, but at the same time, Allah increases His mercy. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we come to Allah, Pleading with humility, with shame. When we ask from Allah in such a situation, not only Allah forgives, but Allah gives. Allah gives more than what we deserve. And it is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Arhamur Rahimin. You know, usually the guilty person would ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go beyond and tajawwaz alayya. That is to go beyond the boundaries. We ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go beyond the boundaries of our sin. That is to forgive our sins. For an example, neglecting our prayer, hurting people, wasting their rights, accusing them, backbiting them, misleading others, and so on and so forth. So many things that we can recall for our misdeeds. Allah will forgive. And then Allah will increase His grace. How? You know, sometimes the grace of Allah is not only in gifts, physical gifts, but Allah bless us with stronger faith, with piety. And these are 
in fact bigger gifts compared to all the other blessings you know when we return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah for forgiveness not only allah forgive but allah will increase in our piety in our faith towards him in continuation to that imam taught us to say wa ashaddul muaqibina fi mawdi'in nakali wa naqima Allah is the harshest in punishment in situations of giving exemplary punishment and chastisement ashaddul muaqibin you know we have seen in history we have read in al quran al karim there were people who were stronger who were supposed to be more better in knowledge and so on so forth today they are on, only mentioned by their names there's nothing remain of them there are things remain for them like pharaoh whose body remains to be exhibited to be seen this guy used to be somebody he used to say ana rabbukumul a'la I am your lord the most lofty today what is he Allah is harshest in punishment in situations of giving exemplary punishment and chastisement and we have seen these brothers and sisters and we should have fear that the same would not happen to us because Allah is ashadd al muaqibin fi mawdi'in nakali wa naqima in punishment and in chastisement no one is at par with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have seen what happened to the people before the people of nabi nuh alayhi salam ad thamud asabul aykafa ay asabul ayka Pharaoh, his family, and so on and so forth. How the severe torment of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. How Allah Subhanahu wa Taala took revenge, and the worst, you know, that is still the simple things, the simple torment and punishment by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Imagine the situation, the even bigger. and severe punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his revenge it is in the hereafter ashaddul muaqibina fi mawdi'in nakali wa naqima imagine the hereafter if we are not forgiven by Allah and he is وأعظم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعظمة. He is the greatest domineer in the domain of absolute power and might. Brothers and sisters, all children of Adam, Bani Adam, commit sin, except for those who are infallible. but a person should not challenge his lord you know we make mistakes we make mistakes but challenging allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a mistake it is defiant defiant to allah almighty the pride and greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow anybody to challenge him and the bondsman the servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be aware of challenging the might the might of allah the owner of the heavens and the earth with the abundance of sins you know sometimes people they are insistent on on sinning and that sin that they do is not by mistake but by defiance they know that what he what he's doing is against allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he wants to do it why because he sees 
some advantages in what he's trying to do, some gains and so on and so forth, and insistence on it, which may reach a point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address in Abadi, if al mashita this is a, as, as a, 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 a narrated by our Imam, saying, Abadi, if al mashita fa inni lan aghfir laka abada, lan aghfir laka abada, Oh my servant, do whatever you want. Verily, I will never forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You know, Imam Sadiq, Imam Sadiq narrated the same hadith. You know, some people who intend to make, you know, sometimes we, we, we intend to defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when Allah realizes that when Allah sees that, Allah says, wa izzati wa jalali la aghfir laka abada. I will never forgive you. Na'udhu billah. You know, something that Allah never forgives in when, is when one takes, one who defies Allah and one who, who challenges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially in matter of shirk. You know, consider like Fir'aun says, Ana rabbukumul a'la. Sometimes people don't say their defiance of Allah, but they do. They show it in their deeds. In the supplication of Abu Amda Thimali, there is something indicating this concept. He said, Ilahi, Oh God, I did not disobey you when I disobeyed you. And I am ungrateful about your lordship. No. So, you know, in dua, dua Abu Hamza Simali, we are taught to say, Oh Allah, when I did, the mistake when I sin against you, not that I am trying to challenge you, not that I am defiant of you, and not that I consider your 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 affairs lightly, no Allah, but because I have been neglectful. Nor am I exposing myself to your punishment. You know, not that I'm doing this to challenge you. See, punish me if you can. Not that, Ya Allah. Because I know I'm weak. And not that I consider your promise of punishment to be something that I consider as lowly underrated. No, not that. Not that I underrate your promised punishment, Ya Allah. But what? This is the way we were taught by our Imam. Lakin That is, you know, the mistake projects itself, the fault projects itself. It keeps on coming to me. Wasawalatli nafsi. And myself, myself, seducing me, luring me. Waghalabani Hawaii. And, oh Allah, my whim overtaken me. Waa'anani, aanani alayha shakwati. And my wretchedness, you know, we are bad. And because of that bad, that bad helps. Uh, uh, urge us more. The righteousness urge me. Aanani alayha shakwati. Wa gharrani sitruk al-murkha alay. So how beautiful our Imam taught us. That is, and oh Allah, your lenient cover on me has seduced me. We keep on doing bad. And Allah covering. We keep on doing bad and Allah keep on covering and becoming lenient, showing leniency towards us. And that leniency, oh Allah, seduce me more. 
how our imam taught us how to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fal'an min adabika man yastangkiduni. Wa min aydil khusama ghadan man yukhallisuni. O Allah, I disobey you and oppose you with my effort. So now who will save me from your torment? And from the hand of the foes tomorrow who will free me? That is on the day of judgment. Oh Allah, who will free me from your punishment? Brothers and sisters, you know, it's very important for us to understand and to focus when we speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never when we raise our hand and face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are not focused towards him and do not consider Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not knowing of our situation. Allah knows. You know, when we do, we are not focused, Allah knows. When we are not serious, Allah knows. Inshallah, you know, with these little small understandings that we have, Allah open our hearts. I will give us, Allah gives us, bless us with the ability to be more focused during the month of Ramadan, and especially during this end of the month of Sha'ban, for whatever that Allah has not forgiven us, inshallah, Allah will forgive us. And Allah will forgive us all our sins during the month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.